So Matt Cohn is our next speaker. He has a thing called Different Hunger. Uh, I'll let Matt kind of talk about the details of what that is, but everyone give Matt a round of applause. <laughs> development studio. I live in Williamsburg and then on the side I'm kind of making the transition of what was previously like my personal blog uh, into become kind of a business. So um, I'm going to walk you guys through a fuck up that went down um, last year and uh, oh, there we go. Um, wait I think I skipped. Oh, it shows the next slide. Sorry technology you know how it is. Um, so who here has like been fucked over on Craigslist? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Alright, awesome. So, me too. Um, I posted a... So basically, I was working as a consultant for a software company um, in New York City. And I started this website in college. And at that time, you know, I was just a college kid that was kind of inspired and wanted to start a website and, you know, build an audience and build a dream business and all that good stuff. Um, but, you know, the real world kicked in and I took a job and the kind of blog just went off to the side. But after probably about four to five, six months, I was like, all right, I know I'm not gonna be doing this forever. I kind of want to get back to my passion project. Um, so I put up an ad looking for a kick-ass intern um, for my website. So um, I got an email from some kid. He was a 19-year-old from Craigslist. Um, there's, that's Mark Cuban and Mark Zuckerberg. No, <laughs> um, but basically, this kid reached out, he's like, you know, I've, I had a blog, I drove this many, I, I drove this much traffic, I worked with this guy on YouTube, I grew this many subscribers, I was like, all right, cool, this kid's legit. Um, and we got to talking, and so we initially, obviously, were starting to talk about an internship, um, but he mentioned that he had been thinking about starting his own business, and we got to talking, and we decided to start a business two weeks later. So I started a business uh, two weeks later with a stranger from Craigslist, and that, <laughs> Those are the million, uh, future millionaires right there. Um, so that was our website. It's pretty, I mean, it looks good. Like, it, it looks like it could have been a multi-million dollar business, but it wasn't. Um, and so this was our service offering. We offered strategy consulting, SEO, web design, engagement, branding identity, content production, marketing, blah, blah, blah. Um, and this was more like reality. Um, so we did we did WordPress. Um, that was good. Yeah, uh, never did that before, but it sounded like a good thing to offer. Um, I didn't do that before. So yeah, that's that's kind of like behind the scenes <laughs> what you're getting. Um, so one lesson learned there was when you appeal to everyone, you appeal to no one. Like when you when you hit people up and you say, hey, I'm this. 21 year old, or I was 22, is, is a rough time. I blacked it out of my mind. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> but, you know, when you appeal to everyone, you appeal to no one, you really have to pick a specific niche market, especially as you're starting out. And then, kind of, once you have that reputability and authority, um, then that's when you start to branch out. And that was a lesson that I learned the hard way. Um, secondly, become a specialist. Um, you know, you got to stick with what you know, or at least outsource to someone who does. Uh, you don't really, again, I just walked you through our kind of sales sheet. Uh, you don't offer things that you can't do and you don't know who does it. Because that will lead to disaster as I'll kind of get into. Um, see, or outsource to someone who is. So, I covered that. So, boom. We were one week into business and we got a 5K deal. And I remember I was on the mega bus and I was on the sale, I was on the sales call with my business partner. And I'm sitting next to some random girl and we're on the phone. Uh, the, the prospect, my business partner and I, and we got the deal for a 5K mobile app development, and I was like, fuck yes. <laughs> and I like, and I, I can say that here, right? No, I'm just yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, I, I was like, I like punched the girl in the arm, I was like, we did it, 5K. <laughs> I didn't punch her, I didn't punch her. But I was pumped, and so, basically we made, we made the pitch, and um, the client was like stunned, he's like, you can do this for 5K? Like, yeah, we can do it. <laughs> we couldn't do it. Um, 
And then th this is the email. This is the email we got about like a week or two later. Um, so basically, I talked to a buddy of mine who actually did do mobile app development projects, and he said, "Yeah, okay. So for that project, you probably should have quoted 15 to 20k." And I was like, "Oh fuck." <laughs> so basically, I kind of told my business partner. We both kind of freaked out, and we we're like, "Oh god, like we're fucked." <laughs> so basically. We kind of try to come up with some excuse and we're like, look, you know, we'll provide you with kind of like the wireframes and we'll provide you with kind of the competitive research and, you know, all those fancy things you're supposed to do when you know how to do these things. Um, and he said, okay, if, if that's the case, then I'm going to sue you. <laughs> so that happened and then we were kind of like, all right, shit, like, we're like grown ups, like, uh, now what do I do? So basically, um, we just kind of, didn't know what to do and my partner kind of freaked out and basically said all right we'll do the project for free we'll finish the project for free and so he didn't tell me that he said look no we'll finish the project he didn't tell me that he told the guy we would do it for free until like a few weeks down the road so that was another major fuck up but anyways the like project never like we, we hired some joke on upwork and you know how that goes we got like a non-functioning app and but hey, we delivered it to the client, so we avoided the lawsuit. But you know, that was definitely a rough kind of first, um, you know, first adventure into entrepreneurship and the real world and all that. Um, so one lesson learned is say yes and figure it out later uh, is a great strategy. But you you know you have to do your research. Um, but as I'll kind of walk you through, a, you know, learning from this previous fuck up, I applied this kind of strategy to a project and I got it and it turned out great. Um, let me go back. Okay, so um, I don't know if you guys know Founder Magazine, but they're a super awesome uh, resource for young entrepreneurs. They feature people like Gary Vee and Ariana Huffington, Tony Robbins, all the sharks. Um, they're just a super massive publication. I'm kind of like a fanboy, but anyways, um, I ended up purchasing their membership uh, site. They have a mem membership site with resources and blah, blah, blah. Um, and I kind of got in touch with Nathan Chan, who's the founder there. Um, and, you know, he got to know me through me kind of being a part of that community and, and you know, just engaging with other people. And he saw that I offered, um, or that I was a web designer. Um, oh, I kind of skipped a part, but basically, let me back up, sorry. Um, basically, what happened was a few months later down the road, um, I made the call to break up the business uh, with my co-founder, 19-year-old from Craigslist. Um, so since then, I've been working for myself, uh, as I mentioned, running this web design studio. And so, you know, like I said, be a specialist. That's what I knew. That's what I could get good at. Um, and so that leads me to here. So boom. All right, cool. Um, so basically, Nathan Chan let me know. He said, yo, dude, or he's Australian. He's like, hey, bruv. You know how it goes. Um, and he asked if, if I did ClickFunnels landing pages. I had never done ClickFunnels landing pages, but it was a great, massive opportunity with a huge client, and I knew that, okay, if I'm gonna say yes, I'm gonna go instantly go do my research, and also ClickFunnels, it's like, it's like a drag and drop kind of landing page builder, it's not a huge deal. Um, but this was a strategy that, or I did the you know, say yes and figure out later, I ended up executing, and you know, I ended up not only working with Nathan on this project, but several other projects, and having him on my portfolio and having this testimonial has led to more than bigger, bigger, clients and projects. So again, it's say yes and figure it out later, but then go and do your research and know that you can fulfill on that uh, demand. So that's the lesson learned. Get a solid understanding of your partner's work ethic. Oh, and this was back to the business. Um, so before you get into business, you have to do your research on your business partner. Um, I mean, anybody can pull together a portfolio that looks really good. Uh, just from a quick Google or like going around on Pinterest, whatever. Um, but you really need to do your research. I wish that I would have um, because, you know, doing that probably would not have gone into business with this uh, stud 19-year-old from Craigslist. Um, determine roles and responsibilities up front. This was another major problem. We would have client communications. I'd be like, email him back, you jackass. Um, and he's like, all right, you're, you're supposed to do the emailing. And like, you know, one, two days would go by and we're still not making money. So um, you just need to figure out, okay, what am I good at? What are my unique areas of expertise? How can we work together, like, you know, balance each other out? 
uh, to really make this a profitable engagement and relationship. Uh, another thing, determine ownership percentage, and something I didn't mention was, I was working full time, so I had a paycheck. This kid was 19 living at home, um, and I was funding the entire business, but we were 50-50 partners, so that's like, that sucks. <laughs> um, so, again, if you're gonna be kind of the, you know, the funding the business, you should be, you should have higher equity. At least 51% would be to majority shareholder. Um, but, of course, I didn't know what the hell I was doing, and that's why I'm here. So, um, figure that out up front. And then, when we did break up, this guy had a laptop, which we financed because it was, oh, it's only $150 a month. Yeah, $150 a month for like 37 months. So basically it turned out to be like a four and a half K laptop when the retail price is like 2.5 or three. And that jackass had it. On top of that, he had a DSLR camera and I was not getting that shit back. Um, so that was another major bummer. <laughs> um, but yeah, so as um, you just mentioned to us, have an operating agreement, have your paperwork down, um, and yeah, that's it. So, and then just kind of since then, like, you know, I've taken this experience and learned from it and was able to go from, you know, $500 worth of client work up to five figures. I've been able to build out, build out a virtual team because again, I understood that I cannot scale, like if, if my friend Colin told me this, um, who his company just got named the 197th fastest growing company in North America, uh, they do like, uh, product development and engineering. He said if you are the main cog in your business, you're the main clog. And so basically what that means is you are only going to be as, as good as you can get. Um, so it's really important to outsource. And uh, a quote that I really like is from Robin Sharma, who's a leadership expert. Um, and he said that if you want to 10x your business, 10x the capability of your people. Um, so that's just like a really powerful quote because it, something that the entrepreneur always goes through is control. We want to be in control. We want freedom. Like we get nervous when we hand over the reins, but you need to be able to do that to grow and, and scale and and put trust and faith in other people because when, they'll they'll recognize that and want to. You basically want to become someone that people want to do good work for, and that's something that I learned the hard way. Um, and another thing, and this is why fuck up events or uh, fuck up nights is such a great event, is because you know. Imperfect people can't relate to perfect people. So when, when we see a, a Zuckerberg or a Steve Jobs, we probably can't relate to their net worth, but we can relate to the struggles that they've had to overcome to get to where they are. Um, and so with my kind of um, website and kind of this, this media brand that I'm building, um, I'm, I'm launching an interview series with very successful people to, to not show, okay, we went from one million our first year to five million the next year, I, I wanna get, behind the scenes and, and kind of get into their, their mental kind of mindsets and understand, all right, what were the struggles that you overcame and how did you get there? And, and what can you share from that struggle that would help someone who's a young 20 something just out of school or just entering the real world, what the hell they want to do with their lives, kind of learning from your struggles and, and, and your journey. Um, so, So that's just kind of, with my interview series, um, that's kind of what I'm trying to share. Uh, you know, everybody started from the same place you're starting. You know, we see like a Tom Brady on TV and you know, I, I know that I did coming up, I was like, these guys are just dropped on planet Earth with this kind of like superhuman DNA. In reality, what separates you from them is just relentless work ethic, habits, mental, your mental game, it, it all starts there. Um, but again, what I'm trying to share is those kinds of um, pieces of advice as opposed to, boom, scaling from five to 10 million, whatever. Um, I'm, I'm kind of trying to, to showcase the, the inner game that helps people get to where they're at. Um, so I'm just gonna play a clip. Oh, it's not gonna work? All right. No worries. Um, so yeah, basically, I was just gonna play a clip, but um, you can follow that interview series. I have three episodes ready to watch right now. Uh, at differenthunger.tv, so it's a new domain, um, so it's pretty cool. My friend's like, you, have, you don't have this because he saw that I was launched yet. I have differenthunger.com, that's like my main uh, website, but boom, you gotta get that kind of branded domain. I think it sounds pretty cool, right? differenthunger.tv, 
All right, cool. Um, and yeah, if you guys want to follow along, differenthunger.com, differenthunger.tv is where you can get those interviews. If you want to reach out to me and Matt at differenthunger.com. Um, but yeah, thank you guys again, and thank you to Fopper Knights and WeWork.